In Module 3, Lesson 17, we're going to practice drawing coordinate planes and the points on the plane. And our main purpose in this lesson is to be labeling our axes with um, equal intervals that may not be one unit each. So we're starting off in the opening exercise by creating a standard one unit uh, interval coordinate plane. Please notice when labeling our coordinate plane, we are labeling the lines, not the spaces. And we're making sure there are equal intervals throughout the number lines. So then we are asked to uh, graph several points. The first one is 3, 2. Second one is 8, 4. Next is negative 3, 8. Next we have negative 2, negative 9. Seems like we're having a hard we'd have a hard time locating that on mine. I'm sure you have enough on yours. 0, 6. Negative 1, negative 2. And then finally, 10, negative 2. Now, one thing you should notice is that we were not able to graph, I was not able to graph, uh, negative 2, negative 9. because they didn't all fit on the grid. Another point that wouldn't fit on here would be 18, 5. Our scale only goes up to 10. That's all that we had room for. So 18 is somewhere out here, but it's not very accurate. In example two, we're drawing the coordinate plane using an increased number scale for one of our axes. So when we look at the ordered pairs that we've got to graph, first we should look at the range of uh, x coordinates and then separately look at the range for y coordinates. Our x coordinates range from negative four, negative three, one, six, nine. So we need to go from a low of negative 4 to a high of 9. If we count our grid left to right, I think we'll find we have plenty of room in order to put the standard grid in for our x-coordinate. On the other hand, the y-coordinates are ranging from a low of negative 40 to a high of positive 35. And if we were to try to graph by ones, you won't find uh, 70, let's see, yes, 75 blocks up and down. So we're going to have to change the scale for the y-axis instead of counting by ones uh, perhaps we can count by fives, since I noticed that all of these numbers are on the five. 
So just to check before we draw it, remember we're talking about the up and down. So if this were 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 0, then negative 5, negative 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, okay. Yeah, we have at least 40. So then we will draw our axis and we will number accordingly. And then so, like we said, we would make our scale for our x-axis, go by ones, one, two, three, four, five, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And our y-axis will count by 5s. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20. Twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, and likewise going down. Negative five, negative ten, negative fifteen, negative twenty. Once we've set up the number lines for our coordinate plane, then we can graph the points that are indicated in the problem. And for example. The first point listed was negative 4, 20. So I'd go across 4 and then up to 20. Second one is negative 3, 35. Then we had one negative 35, that's going to be off of my grid, but it will be on yours. 6, 10, and finally 9, negative 40, and that also will be off of my grid. In example 3, <clears throat> and looking at the coordinates that we are supposed to graph, we have 1 tenth. Uh, negative 7 tenths, and actually nothing larger than 1 in our x-axis. And then in the y-axis, we have a low of negative 7 and a high, or a negative 5, and a high of 7. So our y-axis looks like we should count by 1s, and our x-axis looks like we should count by 1 tenths so that we can be more accurate. And then once we've put our scales in for both of our axes, we can go back in and graph the coordinates they gave us. Starting with 1 tenth and 4. So that would be right there. Then 5 tenths and 7. Negative 7 tenths and negative 5. Negative 4 tenths and 3. and 8 tenths and 1. So in summary, the axes of the coordinate plane must be drawn using a straight edge and labeled x for the horizontal axis and y for the vertical axis. Then before assigning a scale to the axes, it's important to assess or look at the range of values found in a set of points as well as the number of grid lines available. This will allow you to determine if the number of units per grid line should be increased or decreased 
so that all points can be represented on the coordinate plane that you put together.